All right, everybody, we're here at Thermal Take. The booth is buzzing, so I apologize for anything that might be going on behind me that makes you not hear me. But anyways, I've got a couple of things to cover here. We've got some new cooler technology. We've got some fans that they're, they're finally fixing things that I absolutely hated with some of their fans. Got a couple of other things. But before we go on, I want to thank all of our sponsors for helping us come to Computex 2024. That would be Fantex, Thermaltake, Antec, and the government of Taiwan. So anyways, one of the trends that we're seeing right now at Computex 2024 is every single company is trying to push through that sort of invisible barrier in the air cooling market. And I've mentioned it numerous times. You guys have mentioned it in the comments. How do you go beyond the current air cooling sort of designs, which are constrained in so many ways to their sizes and everything else, but still offer better cooling for people who want air cooling, want the simplicity of that. Well, Thermaltake and a bunch of other companies too are going towards what they call 3D vapor chambers. Now, 3D vapor chambers, we actually saw that last year with Cooler Master. We, we're not visiting Cooler Master this year, but I'm sure that they have the next generation of their 3D VC. So anyways, what a 3D vapor chamber does is it's very much like a massive heat pipe that lays right on the top of your processor in order to get the heat from that processor more quickly up into the heat pipes and into the fin array. Now, this is still for Thermal Take at least, their Project Trinity it's very much in the conceptual stages, but they needed to show something here at the show because there's quite a few other companies who are going with a 3D VC. There's a couple of other more traditional coolers though, because look, Thermal Take, they really want to take on who? Thermal Right. Because Thermal Right, they are eating everybody's lunch and breakfast and dinner when it comes to offering amazing performance for great prices. And that's where the Amp Air 600 and to a lesser extent the 200 come into things because you can actually see that these are your still very basic 120 millimeter based heat sinks one of them is a dual tower one of them is a single tower but it's really going to be the price here because they're, they're actually not telling us about the prices they want to keep it a little bit close to their chest but I heard it through the grapevine that they're really trying to get to that $30 mark and that's really that sweet spot especially when it comes to a six heat pipe cooler like the Ampere 600 because this thing as long as you give it a great mount you give it great fans and you're able to keep it below that sort of $40 price point it should be really interesting for a lot of people as an alternative to folks who can't get those thermal right phantom spirits and whatnot because they're getting harder and harder to find these days especially at good prices now the other thing I wanted to show you is look this is not coming to the North American market, thank God. I, I, I had some very critical feedback for them about this. This is the Magair 600 Ultra. At the baseline, there's some amazing things going on here. They have very much tailor-made the heat sinks in order for it to channel air properly. This one is a dual tower heat sink, but the most important thing here is that they have their Tough Air EX fans on here, which are some of the best fans currently on the market. The only problem is, is this does gear to more of like the, the, the Asian market and it is still in, in its beta phase. This thing, it's, it's sort of showing a static image right now, but it just looks like they slapped one of their AIO LCDs onto here. It doesn't look like the, the greatest thing, but according to them, this is a sort of proof of concept. They're going to clean up the wiring and whatnot. But look, I, I think this is, this is one of those situations where you know, less is more. At the base, this is an amazing cooler, but after all these things are added on, God knows the price, and in a lot of ways, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be approaching the price of a 240 millimeter AIO, so in like that $100 plus range. But anyways, Thermal Take, you, you're, you're doing some amazing things here. It'll be great to see these fans on a cooler that hits in the $50 and less category, maybe even pop them on to that amp air over here. There, there's, there's potential, you just gotta take it and run with it. Something else that Thermal Take is coming out with is a thoroughly revised version of their highest end flagship liquid cooler. Now this is flagship not in terms of performance, this is flagship in terms of how much bling it has. So what they're going with is a integrated LCD display, you can actually see it up here in the case. Matte display, it looks pretty good. The only thing that they are really focusing on here is to have it very price competitive. So the 360 Ultra, sorry, the Magflow 360 Ultra is gonna go for, nope, not like $300, but some other 
360 AIOs are with the integrated screens, it's going for $199, which actually puts it into the category of higher end 240 millimeter AIOs, like the ones I covered right up here. So it's, it's good to see them focusing on the looks and on the price. Performance should be probably about mid-tier in their lineup because they are using the Swafan EXs, which are not exactly the best thing when it comes to airflow and static pressure. Okay, let, let me tell you something about my story with the Swafans. I did a build not too long ago with a bunch of Swafans in it in a CTE case from Thermaltake. And the, 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 the frustration was through the roof because whenever I ended up tightening one of these fans down, the RGB turned off. Whenever I untighten it, the RGB turned on, but the fan itself turned off. Now, why was that? That's because the pads on these fans are so wobbly. Whenever you move it around just a little bit, look at that, it turns off, it turns on. There you go, it turns off, even though it looks like it's installed. So thermal take after, maybe after me yelling at them, they finally switched things up. So what we have here now is simply larger pads and better terminals in order to make contact. This is the old one. This is the new one. Look at that difference. It's absolutely massive. So this, it is all wonky and everything like that. Look, it looks like it's on, but it's actually not over here. I put this one on, boom, everything is running without any trouble whatsoever. So hey, look, they're, they're listening to our feedback. That's a good thing. The only thing here is that it's not gonna permeate their fan lineup all the way up to the Swafan EXs and downwards. They're being very, very specific as to what they're targeting. Right now, it's the CT120 and 140 EX RGB models. So those are actually their entry level models, which is ironic because that also means that their higher end fans are not gonna get this new technology for the time being. Okay, so about those Swafan EXs that are gonna stay at the top of Thermal Takes lineup, there's also a slight cut down to those Swafan EXs and that's going to be the MagForce 2.0. It's still all magnetic connectors and whatnot, but the thing about these ones is that they offer a little bit higher performance than the last models that we were looking at over there, which was a CT series, and they come in both forwards and reverse models. So instead of having the ability to swap it around like the Swafan, you buy what you need. It's either a forwards model or reverse model. The nice thing about this is that they're also going to come in four different colors. So you've got the blue, you've got, I think it's called matcha, and you've got black and white. So the blue and matcha will go with a bunch of thermal takes cases that they're launching in the next year. These are meant to align and match directly with the case colors that thermal take is coming out with. You could have probably seen them up here in Dimitri's video. The other thing you have to take into account is the specifications on these. These are not meant as a high-end radiator fan or a high-end airflow fan. They're more geared towards the looks and also being 50% less expensive than those SWAF fans. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about, straightforward, SFX power supply. This little guy, this little guy, we've already seen at CES there was a 1000 watt SFX model. This 1200 watts titanium rated power supply. It's so tiny, I love it. So anyways, I'm Mike with Harrow Canucks. I'm gonna be leaving this crazy thermal take booth, hopefully getting some food and I'm going to see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.